Hey, what's up, what's up, guys? I hope you've had a great week this past week. I hope you've been pushing through with your schoolwork. School's almost over with. That's an amazing thing. Um, I, I hope you just continue with this upcoming week and uh, whatever plans you may have. Uh, I need to make a plan to get a haircut. Um, this is not looking too good, but at least I can uh, look back on this in about a year from now and and look back with some disdain and laugh at it. But uh, but yeah, we, we all got our plans for this coming week. And what I want you to do in part of your plans is to really take some time out of your day to view these videos, but not only view these videos, but use the the small group guides after you're done with these videos, whether it's your parents asking you these questions or you asking yourself these questions through these small group guides that I and Betsy send out. Um, they're very helpful in these devotionals. But getting into today's devotional, over the past few weeks, we've been talking about the incredible story and in life of Moses. We've been talking about Moses and how God brought him from the most unusual of circumstances, crazy circumstances, to lead his people, to lead God's people, the Israelites, out of slavery of Egypt and into a land that God had promised them. And throughout all this that we've been talking about the past few weeks, we've seen that the Israelites' journey and everything isn't hasn't been easy. It hasn't been easy. They had to endure the, the suffering uh, caused by the Egyptians. They had to take the long route to the promised land as opposed to the shorter, easier route. Um, they lacked food sometimes. They lacked water sometimes. But each time they struggled, each time they struggled, we've seen faithfulness of God who has stuck to his promise. He stuck to his promise of taking care and providing for the Israelites. Now, with today in Moses' story, I want to pick up a couple months after what we looked at last week, a couple months after what we looked at. The Israelites, they had miraculously crossed the water, and they had fled the Egyptians, and they were safe from the Egyptian, all thanks to God, who not only parted the waters for them, but also gave the people daily direction through the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire by night. The Israelites were literally seeing miracles every day just because of that. But in spite of seeing all of these miracles each day, all these different miracles, the parting of the Red Sea, the pillar of fire, the pillar of cloud, they see all this stuff. Despite all that, in the second month of traveling, the Israelites were already grumbling. They were already grumbling again for the third time, the third time. And we can see that in Exodus chapter 16. So Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 through 5, this is what it says. And the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So right here we see that the Israelites were grumbling to Moses and Aaron. They were grumbling to them that they were hungry. They were hungry and they once again said the same thing that we've heard before. We've heard them say this before multiple times already. They were saying, why have you brought us out here to die when we could have stayed in Egypt? The thing that's interesting about this is don't we sometimes do this a lot too, this this type of grumbling? We sometimes say things like, God, why have you done this in my life? I, I was better off before you stepped in. Life was more fun before you messed things up. We question God, but just like with the Israelites, God is revealing himself to us each and every day. We either just take it for granted when it happens or we're completely missing it whenever it does happen. We're missing out on it. Now with Moses, God tells Moses that he is going to literally make it rain bread on these Israelites, but he also wants to know if the Israelites would actually listen to him. So he told them that each day when the food fell, they should only grab enough for that day. 
And since the Sabbath day, the day of rest is the seventh day, they should grab double the food on the sixth day so that they have enough for the day of rest. Um, then not only that, God also told them that he was going to give them meat. God told the Israelites he was going to give them meat as well so that they know that God was taking care of them through this situation. So sure enough, evening came and the camp was covered in quail. It was covered in this meat. Then in the morning, the bread-like substance, it covered the ground. It covered the ground. The Israelites had never seen anything quite like the substance. So God called it manna. And it ironically means, what is it? That's what it means. What is it? So they ran out and they grabbed it all up and they ate. However, some of the Israelites didn't listen to God's command. And they tried to keep some of the bread overnight because they honestly got a little bit greedy. And because of this, the next morning, the bread was completely spoiled. It was completely spoiled. It was maggots. It, it smelt. You couldn't eat it. Then on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much so that the Sabbath day would be covered. They'd be covered for the Sabbath day because they already collected for it. And the next morning, the bread was completely fine for the Sabbath day, and it did not spoil that time. And the thing is, we try to do this as well. We try to do this as well. We try to take what God did for us yesterday and consider it good for us today. It, it's, it's good enough for us today so that we don't have to seek or trust him during this day, that we're already covered. We try doing that sometimes. We try to live off of what God did at a camp service or a retreat or a mission trip or on a Sunday morning. And because of that, we refuse to see the blessings that he has done for us each and every day, even today. So continuing with Moses' story, the Israelites continue to move on toward the promised land. They're continuing uh, still with manna falling down from the sky. Um, then as they camped one night, they realized that there was no water to drink. They had no water to drink. So of course they went to Moses to complain. And we see this in Exodus chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17 verses three through six, it says this. The people thirsted there for water. And the people grumbled against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. So this is pretty cool. Once again, the Israelites were grumbling, but God came through on his promise. He came through on his promise as he always does. Moses hit the rock. He hit the rock, and fresh water came out from it. Now fast forward two years. And now the Israelites were right on the edge of the promised land. They were so close to it, close to this land that God had promised them, hence the name promised land. Now at this point in the story, Moses sends out 12 spies to check out the promised land and report back to them if, if they could take over the land because they need to take over this land. 10 of them came back saying that it's too dangerous. It's too dangerous. But then two came back saying that they could do it. They could do it with God's strength on their side. So in the true Israelite fashion, the true Israelite fashion, the Israelites begin to freak out. They begin to freak out right here. And because of their lack and trust of faith in God, God responded by telling them that none of the adult Israelites who were complaining would see the promised land. They would all die before they even reached it. Now, I wish I could spend more time of this piece of history in Moses's life, but I, I want to jump ahead for the sake of the lesson. I want to jump ahead, actually jumping ahead 38 years into the future of what we just saw and checking out another piece of Moses's story that sounds very familiar to something we just heard about. And this comes in Numbers chapter 20. So Numbers chapter 20, verses 2 through 8. Let's look at this. 
Now there was no water for the congregation, and they assembled themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people quarreled with Moses and said, Would that we had perished when our brothers perished before the Lord? Why have you brought the assembly of the Lord into the wilderness, that we should die here, both we and our cattle? And why have you made us come up out of Egypt to bring us to this evil place? It is no place for grain or figs or vines or pomegranates, and there is no water to drink. Then Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly to the entrance of the tent of meeting and fell on their faces. And the glory of the Lord appeared to them. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the staff and assemble the congregation, you and Aaron your brother, and tell the rock before their eyes to yield its water. So you shall bring water out of the rock for them and give drink to the congregation and their cattle. And Moses took the staff from before the Lord as he commanded him. Now right here, this sounds familiar, right? Well, as this opens, it's actually been 40 years since the Israelites left Egypt and 38 years since they sent the spies into the promised land. It's been that long, and the people have wandered for 38 years and had now come back to the very place where they had sent the spies. They were no closer to the promised land than they were 38 years ago. Not only that, but the ones who are now complaining about the lack of water were from a brand new generation, but they acted just like their parents had before them. Though most of this generation wasn't there for the parting of the Red Sea. They didn't see that miracle. They still saw the daily presence and the provision of God each and every day through the cloud that followed, through the fire that led, and the manna that rained down. So God told Moses and Aaron to take the staff and gather everyone together so that they could see what God was doing for them. And God told Moses not to smack the rock as he had done before. He didn't say to smack the rock, but instead he told Moses to speak to it, told Moses to speak to the rock and water would pour out from it from there. And we see this continue in verses nine through 12 of Numbers. So Numbers chapter 20, verses nine through 12, this is what it says. And Moses took the staff from before the Lord as he commanded him. Then Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock and he said to them, hear now you rebels, Shall we bring water for you out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and he struck the rock with his staff twice, and, and water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank in their livestock as well. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not believe in me, to uphold me as holy in the eyes of the people of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land that I have given them. At this point, 40 years into this journey, Moses' patience had been exhausted. First, out of anger and frustration, he called the Israelite people rebels. And then he said, must we bring you water out of this rock? And then Moses then struck the rock with the staff, which isn't what God told him to do. God didn't tell Moses to strike the rock with the staff. God told Moses to speak to this rock this time. But water still came out of it. Because of his lack of trust in God in front of the Israelites, Moses and Aaron were not allowed to enter the promised land. I mean, can you imagine? For 40 years, you've been leading these people. You've been leading them. You've been putting up with annoying complaint after annoying complaint. And now that you're close, you really mess up. You really mess up and you're told that you're not allowed to enter that land that you've been working so hard toward all this time. You're not allowed to enter it. That's what happened to Moses. So through all of the scripture that we've been talking about pertaining to Moses and the Israelites today, I share this because there's a few things that we can learn from all of this. And one of those is that we need to stop living from prior encounters with God and instead seek him today. How this relates to Moses is Moses had many amazing encounters with God throughout his life, which is great. But as he got older and more frustrated with the Israelites, Moses started living based on prior encounters he had had with God instead of seeking and obeying him in that moment. I believe this because the Bible tells us that while God told Moses earlier in his life to strike the rock 
with his staff and whatever would come out of it. This time, God specifically told Moses to speak to the rock. He told him to speak to the rock, but Moses didn't listen and instead did what had been done before. And that was disobedience. And you may be thinking that this is something that we never do, but I promise this happens a lot today as well. You have an amazing encounter with God at a camp or a retreat or a mission trip or a Sunday morning service, and things are great. But as time goes on, you don't think you need to spend time with God as much because you had that incredible experience with him previously. You don't think you need to spend as much time. And guys, that is the problem right there. Well, I know that God did something incredible in your life in that moment, and I don't mean to discredit any of those things. Those things are amazing. I'm happy that God was able to reach you and touch you in that way. But he has something more for you each and every day. He has something more for you today. And when you think that your previous encounter was enough, you're missing out on what God has in store for you and your life. We need to stop living from prior encounters with God and instead seek him today. Another thing we can learn from all this dealing with Moses is in your anger, do not sin. Moses got angry. He was fed up with the Israelites complaining. And the thing is, I don't blame Moses at all right there. 40 years of complaining would definitely wear me down as well. But where Moses went wrong right here was that he sinned because of his anger. He disobeyed and dishonored God. To add a little more clarification on this, this is what it says in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 through 27. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and give no opportunity to the devil. If you look closely at that verse, you'll notice that Paul, the writer of Ephesians, he didn't say, don't ever get angry. No, anger and frustration are not sins. They're not sins. They're God-given emotions. But it's what we do when we get mad that can lead us either to sinning or to honoring God. Did you know that you can honor God with your anger? We often think that anger is always a bad thing, but if you're able to praise God and obey him, even when you're angry, it not only glorifies him, but other people will see that. They'll see that, and you controlling your anger could actually help point someone towards Jesus. And this leads to the third thing that we can pick up from the life of of Moses and everything that we've talked about. And that is that Jesus is the only source of living water. We are not Jesus. We should all know this. And now that we've got that established, now that we know this, we need to start living it. We got to start living it. In response to the complaints of the Israelites, when Moses got mad, he said, must we bring you water from this rock? You see, Moses thought he was the source of water, that by his strength and his ability, water would come out of the rock. But Moses was not God. In John chapter 4, Jesus meets a woman at the well. He meets a woman at the well, and most of us have read this before. We've seen this story before, but if you haven't, it's definitely a great read, and you should check it out. But with this, Jesus asks this woman at the well to get him some water out of this well. And she responds by asking why Jesus, a Jew, is asking her, a Samaritan, for water. Because these two people, these two types of people, these groups, they didn't associate with each other normally. And Jesus responds with this in John chapter 4, verse 10. Jesus responds to the woman by saying this, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. While Moses thought that he was the source of water, Jesus actually is living water. But Jesus wasn't talking about H2O. No, Jesus was talking about water that gives eternal life. It gives you salvation. And just like how the first rock was struck by Moses to give water so that they could live, Jesus too was struck so that we could have a living water 
and in eternal life. With all this said, I'd now like to close this out in prayer. So let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, again, thank you for letting us be here today, even though we are not physically here in the same exact room that I am right now at the same exact point, we are still able to communicate with each other, Lord, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful we're in a country that allows us to do that, Lord. Just please be with all these students and, and whoever may be listening to this, Lord. Be with everyone that is that is listening to this and everyone in this church as well as everyone outside of this church and everyone in the world through what we are currently going through lord allow all of us to be the shining lights that are needed during these times lord allow us to to shine bright like you want us to lord guide us in the way that you want us to don't keep us from from thinking that we can do it on our own keep us from from striking the rock when you tell us to speak, Lord. Help us. Guide us, Lord. Ask all this in your name. Amen. Well, that concludes this video, guys. It was a little bit longer than most of them, but it's still a, a great a great message that you can get from the life of Moses. So one last thing I wanted to mention is each Saturday we have Zoom Devos through the Zoom meeting app. Um, usually at 4 p.m. It usually runs to 4.30 or 4.40 p.m. So it's not too long. Um, it, it's definitely enough time to, to fit in into your schedule before you, you go off and eat supper. So uh, yeah, guys, I, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.